Hey there all you filthy heathens. My name is Kirk and I'm back with you today for another episode of the Filthy Heathens podcast. So I wanted to drop some videos uh, this for the last seven days. You know, I really haven't dropped anything in about a week. And every time I would think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a full episode on this thing, something new would happen. And then I'd say, oh, I'm gonna, I want to do an episode on that too. And then another thing would happen. And there's just so many things that have been going on that, you know, I had to, I had to, I couldn't just do a quick rant. It had to be more. So I had to, I had to put them all together here and try to just condense them into one big thing. So the episode today probably won't go very long because it really has just one key outline to it. Joe Biden is the worst president we have ever had and he is only in his he's in just over 100 days so in less than four months he is quite possibly one of he is definitely one of the worst presidents we have ever had so far he is he is not just reacting badly to certain situations he is creating bad situations for himself any crisis that is going on right now um in in the u.s is largely because he has failed or he has produced this crisis so i'm going to go over all the different crises is that the right word crises whatever it is i'm going to go over all that with you today so what i want to start with is What's going on right now? The gas shortages. So right now, our uh, in the U.S., our we're having states that people can't get gasoline when they go to the when they go now to the this, gas station. The colonial pipeline so, CEO oh, is that all right? So uh, Fox Business is showing gas shortages continue as Colonial Pipeline restarts. Basically, what we had was a cyber attack that took out one of our probably the biggest uh, pipeline in the country. The Colonial Pipeline uh, got cyber attacked. So they had to shut down, and we've been seeing fuel outages. So people going to the gas station, there's either a really long line, excuse me, a really long line, or they are, uh, or, I mean, they just can't get gas. People are just out of gas. There's no, there's no gasoline there at the gas station. Uh, for those across... Uh, in the UK, petrol. We'll call it petrol. Anyway, um, so you can see just by this map here, these are the states that are affected with gas shortages. And it's not just that, oh, there's a few people, there's a few gas stations that ran out of gas. We're talking that in you know places like North Carolina, they're seeing over 50% of their gas stations with no gas at all. So you you go up to a... To a uh, to a, a gas station and they have a sign on there that says either no gas or all they have is premium. They're out of diesel. They're out of regular. They're out of uh, the mid, mid grade stuff. They're out of everything except premium. So now here's the thing is you would have expected some sort of a little, of a, a little bit of a panic. You find out, Oh, the gas or the, the oil uh, pipeline has been shut down. So there may be a, some panic buying here. Definitely. So that happens, and then there's more uh, more people find out, oh, okay, well, more and more people find out, oh, so-and-so down the street, he's worried about this. Maybe I should be worried about it, too. So they go and start stocking up on gasoline. So you've seen an increase, so there is some panic buying going on, and that generally happens with any kind of shortage that's going on. There's some panic buying. But then also, you're just seeing a whole bunch of things go on where people are just... Uh, People are just worried in general. So gas prices have been skyrocketing over the last four or five months. And it's not a good situation over here where, you know, about six months ago or so, gas was around $2 per gallon. And now it's uh, it's topping up over four. So it's basically got, it's doubled. The price of gasoline has doubled just in the last five or six months. So that is not good. Now, fortunately, the... Uh, these uh, uh, these governors in these states, like North Carolina, Virginia, um, and other states, they what they've done is they've decided to declare states of emergency, 
So that allows them to bypass some of the federal regulations that are in place. So part of the reason why we're having uh, shortages in these areas is that there's not enough truck drivers that can go or are not available to go and deliver gasoline to these places. So we figured there'd be a disruption, but this is a crisis completely is completely something that could have been avoided, but there is a policy in place where Joe Biden did specifically cancel the Keystone pipeline, which means that this is something that could have been picked up by a different pipeline or wouldn't have caused as much of a panic. But because right now you have an idiotic president who's decided to close down a major pipeline that was underway, the construction was underway, that would have brought plenty of oil from Canada down to America, he decided to cancel that first day in office. And now you have an idiot governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, who is trying to cancel, who is trying to shut down another pipeline in the middle of gas shortages. So this right now can only really get worse because you have an idiotic president and idiotic governor both trying to shut down pipelines, which is going to help us, you know, shore up supply so we don't have actual shortages. You have governors who fortunately are smart enough to know, hey, if we declare states of emergency, we can have the actual existing truck drivers drive this gasoline and pick up more hours and get paid more to do this um, and bypass some of these regulations. There's all this stuff going on. So you can see uh, 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 Patrick DeHan, he has been tweeting on this the whole time. You know, gasoline demand is up, so obviously that's going to cause you know high price of demand. That you that can cause shortages, that can cause uh, spike in prices. That that can happen. That's fine. Um, but when you start seeing here that um, North Carolina, there's areas where 78% of gas stations are out of gasoline. 72% of pl- uh, areas in Raleigh, Durham. That's the capital of North Dakota, or not North Dakota? Sorry, North Carolina. That's the capital city, Raleigh. There's 72% of the gas stations are out of gasoline. Charlotte's the biggest city in North Carolina. 71% out of gasoline. 69%, 65%, these are all, um, you know, these are all huge areas in these states, and they're all out of gasoline. So this is, a, uh, this is a, uh, an issue brought on specifically because of a, an attack on a national security attack on our pipelines, the president hasn't really addressed it at all. In fact, his uh, his press secretary stated that, oh, this is just a private company thing. They'll have to figure it out. I, that's This is a direct national security threat, and the president has nothing to say about it. So this is something specifically that is Joe Biden's fault because he has not responded well as a president. He has not done anything to make the gas issue better. In fact, everything he has said for the last three and a half months as president, what, four months now, has been things that would make anybody worry about fuel shortages. He has been awful on this. Now, another thing to worry about, another thing to worry about uh, for gas prices is inflation. So we just found out today that inflation is up 4.2% in April, which is the fastest it has is, is risen in over 10 years. So the last time we had inflation rise this much was when the housing market collapsed and we had a big old banking crisis. So that is rough. We are having the same thing happen now. So you're starting to see, you're starting to see this with all the, uh, all the cryptocurrencies that are just popping up all over the place. And you're seeing Bitcoin um, up around like $50,000, I think it was, fifty or 60000 I know it dropped because Elon Musk decided to weigh in on it or something. But um, yeah, you're starting to see that. What I think you're really seeing with those Bitcoins and other, other cryptocurrencies, the reason why they're skyrocketing in, in how much they're worth is probably because people are a little bit worried that we've spent so much money over the last uh, year and a half that they're, and you're seeing it in the inflation numbers it's not that these you know these cryptocurrencies are worth more it's just that your dollar is worth less and you have to remember too is that again going back to Joe Biden first of all he's still panicking everyone about covid 
COVID is over. It is done. We have done everything we can to defeat this virus. People who are going to get the the vaccine are going to get the vaccine. I'll tell you right now, I got my first dose a couple weeks ago. I'm getting my next dose on Monday. And then it's over. It is done. All right? Everybody I know that is in a high uh, a high risk uh has a high risk situation whether they're old they're fat whatever it is they've all gotten their vaccines people who are going to get the vaccine are going to get it people who are not are not so that's it people have the right to gauge the risk for themselves and go on this this disease should be over and done with by the i mean especially by the end of the summer i mean You've given everybody a chance to get the vaccine. The vaccine is free. It's free to you to go and get it. This should be all over. There should be no more masks. We should all be doing right now what Florida and Texas are doing, which is everything's open. You know, have a great summer. That's what we should be doing. So you still have Joe Biden, you know, freaking everybody out about COVID. He, uh, you know, he's spending like crazy, which we're either borrowing this money or he's just having it printed which either way is not good long term. And I think you're seeing the the worries on this too because gas prices were already skyrocketing and now your dollar can purchase less. So you're going to see a big problem here where everything's going to just start, you know, rising up, all the prices are going to be rising up. You know, this is not a good situation that we're seeing here when it comes to just all the factors. So another crisis. So we have gas shortages and now we have inflation. Now moving on to the next crisis, again, another Biden created crisis. Um, Something this isn't happening in America, but this is something happening overseas. So right now, if you've been watching the news, there's a lot of violence going on in Israel with uh, Palestinians, with Hamas, really. Hamas is basically in charge of the of the West Bank. So, here's the thing. These things were not happening last year or the year before. So, they, you know, the Palestinians and Hamas have been firing rockets into uh into Israel, into Jerusalem, into Tel Aviv, and they are specifically targeting civilian sites. So, Israel is, you know, responding and they are responding We'll just say with, uh, I don't want to say excessive because I always think you should respond back, you know, not just in kind, but enough to get them to stop, essentially. So um, here's the thing. These things weren't happening under Trump. The reason being is Trump was not funding these terror organizations by calling it foreign aid to the Palestinians. So he was not funding Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. He was not funding them. Biden, on the other hand, comes in and you can see on april 7th biden administration and this is from bbc news biden administration to restore 235 million dollars in u.s aid to palestinians and then this is on april 7th so then a month later you know we're a month what five weeks later now there's unrest in the middle east because you had from the palestinian territories rockets being launched into civilian areas in Uh, in Israel. So that is a, you know, correlation is not equal causation, but that's a hell of a correlation. And you can see the, the issue. Here's some of the, some of the footage that you can see. Now, these are more targeted attacks by Israel. These are more targeted attacks by Israel. They're they're really close to civilian areas, but they do target specific areas. The reality is, is that you always see this. You see... Hamas and other terrorist groups in uh, in the Palestinian territories launching rockets into Israel. You don't ever see that, but the media will report when Israel responds, and Israel always responds more aggressively than they were originally attacked. 
and I, I can't fault Israel for doing that. Now, I do have some issues because I have seen some videos where you had um, Israeli authorities uh, going into, um, uh, the I believe it's called the Dome of the Rock. It's where the uh, the Temple Mount is for for uh for the for for Ju- for Judaism where their temple is supposed to be but it's just, it's the church for for Muslims there they went in there and kind of cleared it out I don't really like seeing that it does bother me however you have to realize too Hamas and these other terrorist organizations they launch rockets from elementary schools and from churches and from mosques you I mean they as much as I don't think they would, I would like to think they wouldn't launch rockets from that holy of a place. You know, we, you can't really put it by them. So this is what you're going to get when you have a president of the United States giving money to terrorist organizations. So moving on, we've got another issue. So we've got gas shortages. We've got rapid inflation. We've got, you know, after Trump created, I think it was four or five Middle East peace deals, we now have unrest in the Middle East again. We also have, we still have our crisis at the border. Now, I want to make something clear. Joe Biden put Kamala Harris in charge of the border shortly after he became president. Kamala Harris was the one that was supposed to take care of the border. The border is the worst possibly that it's ever been. 21,000 migrant kids are being held at the border. I thought we didn't want kids in cages. Apparently, Biden and Kamala Harris are okay with kids in cages. So, finally, you have these governors, even Democrat governors, coming out and saying, hey, we need to do something here. So, these governors are coming out uh, and saying, you know, what is it? We have... 20 of America's 20, 20 of, a, of America's 27 governors have urged the Biden administration Tuesday to handle the situation at the southern border, saying that the U.S. frontier with Mexico was neither closed nor secure. And here's the thing. These are governors that are border state governors as well. But you also have other governors from other states that where Biden is trying to send these migrants to places like North and South Dakota, places like New Hampshire places like Georgia. I see a couple of states here that are also swing states. And that kind of worries me too. Biden trying to send illegal immigrants into states that, you know, where elections are close. And yeah, I know illegal immigrants don't vote in our elections. Yeah, I get it. Um, But we've already seen, I've seen the images if you thought the kids in cages under Trump was bad, it is at least twice as bad under Biden right now. The only good sign from this, from this border crisis, is this one thing. And I'll show you from the Daily Wire. Biden administration restarts border wall construction. Joe Biden is building Trump's border wall. After stopping it, which is part of the reason that caused the influx of these migrants into, into the U.S., Joe Biden is now... He is now reverse course, and he's going to start building Trump's wall. So I guess there's one good thing Biden did. He created such a mess at the border that he realized, oh, shit, i got to build a wall. So as you can see, Joe Biden is by far, he's had the worst first four months of any president, I think, in the history of the U.S. I mean... Abraham Lincoln's always going to have the, the the worst start to a presidency because of the Civil War, um, but yeah, he was he's been awful. Almost every crisis that's been created is is it's something that he created. It's not just him responding badly to bad situations. He has been awful, and it really is time to really take a look and realize. If you voted for Joe Biden, this is what you voted for. So, I mean, is, do you really think you can look at gas shortages, rapid inflation, funding terrorism, a border crisis, and then on top of that, he is completely said, you know what that whole thing I talked about, not built, we don't need a wall? Yeah, I lied about that. 
was all of that worth it just to make sure you didn't have a few mean tweets? So that's all I got for you today. I want to thank all of you for uh, for tuning in today. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to you know grow the channel as much as I can. Obviously, you know I have a full time job. Otherwise, you know and you know I'm just trying to make do and just uh, like I said, this is going to continue to be my video diary and just let me rant for a little bit. So, but what we're seeing now is is crazy. So if you can share this with your friends, again, like I always say, if you like my work, make sure you share this with a friend. If you hate my work, make sure you share it with two friends so you guys can make fun of me. I'm cool with that as well. If anything, uh, if you have any ideas for videos, something like I said, I I don't want to do politics all the time. I try to chime in whenever a, for example, a UFC fight comes up that I'm interested in. I'll talk about that. Uh, if anything else comes up in culture, I'll, I'll bring it up as well. But if you have any other ideas for, for videos, let me know in the comments. I'm, I, I respond to comments. If, uh, if you haven't noticed already, I will respond to comments and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be more happy to go over anything you like, but in the meantime, I want to thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and you have a great rest of your evening, you bunch of filthy heathens.